Ethiopia lies in East Africa. It is the cradle of humanity and birthplace of coffee. It boasts a long history and colorful culture. But short of fossil energy such as petroleum, natural gas and coal. Today, as fossil energy resources are getting exhausted and carbon emission is increasing, countries across the world are trying to develop wind energy. Can wind resource satisfy requirements of Ethiopia for growth and transformation? Research carried out by UN Environment Program, the EU and Hydro China Corporation reached the same conclusion. The Somali jet stream, which is formed after low pressure in the western Indian Ocean, changes its direction at the Horn of Africa, working together with the Rift Valley brings excellent wind resources in Ethiopia. In particular, outstanding wind resources and development conditions in Adama region is rarely found elsewhere in the world. Adama lies at the throat of the Rift Valley, 90 kilometers away from the capital city, Addis Ababa. Now, the largest modern wind farm in East Africa is being built by Hydro China. It is the first clean energy project supported by the preferential buyer's credit from Exim Bank of China. In June 2011, Adama Wind Power Farm Phase 1 was commenced. Construction of wind farms starts from road. Roads to wind farm should have broad pavement and solid subgrade. Otherwise, there would be no way to transport those massive objects weighing dozens of tons to the site. Civil works of wind turbine include such steps as excavation of foundation pits, reinforcement binding, concrete casting, and backfilling. Each step of work requires diligence. The function of substation is crucial. Electricity generated from wind turbines is boosted up to 33 kilovolts via unit transformers. It is then collected in several clusters and transmitted to substation for second boosting and finally to the national power grid. Research and development of wind turbine generators as well as wind farm design is a multi-science discipline. And manufacturing of equipment needs to be based on a complete industrial system. Here comes the real challenge, transportation. Loading and unloading long and fragile blades, as well as oversized and heavy tower sections alone, makes no small problems. Shift of seasons, climates and weather, along with thousands of kilometers of inland logistic, and tens of thousands of miles of marine transportation pose severe challenges to vessels, fleets and drivers all the time. The wind turbine generator unit shall operate for over 20 years under harsh weather conditions like strong winds, torrential rains, cloud and mist, strong sunshine, 
and intensive shocks. So the leveling of the base rings, which is the strutting piece for the wind turbine at the very bottom, is of great importance. To lift dozens of tons of equipment over 70 meters into the air and install it correctly, heavy-duty hoisting machinery equipment is needed, accompanied with close teamwork. The 400-ton crawler crane is the most powerful kind in Ethiopia. Hoisting of the blades is the last step of erecting wind turbine. Long and fragile blades must be protected against bumping of any type. Wind often causes trouble when the blades are hoisted. Compared to erection of turbines, installation of lattice tower of transmission line and equipment in substation is much easier. However, with thousands of control and protection wiring stretching more than 80 kilometers, it can only be completed with patience and focus. The last step before generation is equipment debugging and commissioning. With twirling of blades, Wind of Adama is being transformed into a steady stream of power. The first unit of Adama Wind Farm Phase 1 was combined to the grid and started to generate electricity on March 31, 2012, and it declared a new era of green growth in Ethiopia. It has effectively relieved the intense shortage of electricity, accelerated the industrial development in regions around Adama and the capital city. and it also changes the lifestyle of locals. As an environmental friendly project, Adama Wind Farm is a notable example of minimizing land occupancy, controlling noise and emissions. The constructor minimizes the impact on residents and animals. Several universities were involved. Capacity was built as many students and faculties contributed in construction, operation and maintenance. Yeah, what the hell? 